Hey guys, I wanted to talk about a product that I just recently became aware of and this was announced a while back. So a lot of you guys might actually have already been well aware of this existence. It came up on a, I don't know, it was like a sponsored feed or something. And I immediately jumped in and started uh, researching, looking at the backlog of YouTube videos, uh, the majority of which are not hands-on reviews because the units are not released yet. However, there is one fairly good IGN video that does show some uh, playtesting on the units. And uh, mostly what I wanted to discuss was the topic surrounding who this is for. And I've noticed that a lot of the YouTubers, especially the ones that follow the Evercade consoles, um, they've been kind of a, a mixed bag of some of them just straight up say this is not for them. Others say, you know, this is not normally for them, but they're curious enough and they like the looks of the device and the price point that they're going to jump in on it. In my case, I actually wanted to come in as one of the many or few won't be known until we see if this is actually successful or not for the brand. But I am amongst the camp of people who this actually would be for. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The main one is um, I have been following Evercade since the first iteration of their console. Um, I didn't purchase one for many reasons. I already have a plethora of handheld consoles myself. Um, and over the years, especially even at the time when the first Evercade was released, uh, there were choices that were just better hardware wise and I understand that part of the appeal of the Evercade brand is the ability to actually collect physical cartridges but to me there was a couple of issues with that the first one is I'm all for collecting games in uh, physical media as long as those games are one-to-one -one. so for instance if I want to collect metric titles then I want to make sure that each one of them is a title once I have the individual titles collected I'm okay with like multi you know DVDs or cards or whatever um, but to me collectability is on a one-to-one -one basis especially for video games and uh, didn't really feel like a card with 15 17 20 titles whatever from uh, major companies licensed or otherwise was a pull for me towards uh, the ever brand then came the VS product the, uh, the 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 versus product cut my attention and I almost jumped on it. Um, I, I just didn't really like the initial Evercade color schemes and I'm a sucker for aesthetics. So a lot of times when I buy into consoles, I do it mostly for the aesthetics. A good example of that is the Amber Nick products. I usually go for the ones that have color schemes that I like. And so for like, for instance, for the RGE, I think it's a 353. I went for the SNES controller lookalike one. And that's, that's what pulls me into collecting consoles themselves. That aside, uh, there was also some issues that I just didn't like about the original uh, handheld, which included the screen. I just didn't really care for the way that the screen looks. And for the actual uh, Versus product, it just, to me, it resembled one of the like retro bit cheaper consoles. Then enter the EXP, and that's when I actually started paying more attention. Um, the main reason I didn't go for an EXP wasn't price point uh, so much, uh, although I do think that it's high enough that it's competing with a lot of the emulation consoles out there that are sold fairly cheaply through through Amazon these days. However, the screen aspect ratio was what threw me off. And I do understand that it does open up the doors for uh, nicer native titles uh, that might be released at some point that take advantage of the full resolution. But it still didn't sit well because a lot of these games that I would be collecting, they would mostly be arcade games from most of the 90s, I'd say. And then uh, if it was console games, it would be 8 and 16-bit consoles, all of which were 4x3 aspect ratio for the most part. They were mostly released for consumption on TVs, and that's what I would like to see for uh, emulation and gaming consoles to do as well. So I skipped on that, I, and I'll be honest, I've been on the fence. I almost bought one not even a few weeks back, not even realizing that this new product had been uh, announced, because this, this product got, what was announced quite a few months back. But the, uh, the new product, which is actually not branded as an Evercade, uh, is the Super Pocket by uh, Hyper Megatech, which is a sub-brand of Evercade, uh, or sorry, of, of Blazing Entertainment. And so Blazing Entertainment, um, you know, it's it's pretty obvious what they're trying to do. They're trying to appease a more casual crowd that doesn't necessarily go for like high specs. Um, they, they, they don't necessarily want to go in and just spend a ton of money on trying to collect every single one of the cards uh, released. But what's interesting about this product is that uh, if you look at it uh, aesthetically, it resembles those uh, cheaper consoles sold by, uh, I forget, I think it's called My Arcade. 
there's this uh, brand that sells a lot at Walmart, Walgreens, you know, so just random places. But it does have uh, nicer features. It's got an IPS screen display. It's small, but it is an IPS display. The buttons seem to be, at least from the IGN review, they seem to be uh, pretty good. They're not super wobbly or, or, you know, cheap feeling. And the most important aspect of this is that it comes with uh, built-in titles that are fully licensed, which is the Blazing Entertainment MO, right? They they strive on releasing software that's actually been fully licensed. They don't they don't do what some of these uh, Chinese uh, like Amber Nick and stuff like that do, where they just kind of create the consoles and then they leave them for the open market to resell with SD cards preloaded with a bunch of stuff that you know is questionable at best. So that's a big selling point. The second curious thing about it is that they instead of releasing a single unit with 25 30 games on them they actually released initially at least two separate units uh, one is a Capcom themed one and the other one is a Taito but the themes go along with the with the color schemes as well which is kind of cool totally dig the the blue and yellow scheme of the of the Capcom one I think the Taito one is actually good looking as well um, if I were to choose between the two and I'll get into this in just a moment because I did make a decision I would definitely go for the for the Capcom one I wish they would have done the button in a uh, the front buttons in an alternate color uh, they left them blue which is a strange choice because on the title one they do have them in the kind of turquoise color uh, which is the alternating color the back side is yellow and it has blue buttons so I don't know strange decision but maybe they just uh, felt like the yellow was a little too uh, grabby on the front and they didn't want to go for that they wanted to go for something a little bit more subtle that said the color schemes match the specific brand titles that they're including and the capcom one actually has a pretty good roster of games i think it's 12 uh if i'm looking at this correctly and then the title one has 17 uh games in them i'm not gonna go through the list of games uh there's plenty of youtube videos out there and you can just go to the uh hyper mega tech website which is hypermegatech.com and then just look up the information there they're also already available for pre-order on best buy uh, amazon probably a few other retailers over in the uk and europe they have uh, funstock.com or sorry funstock.co.uk not .com and this is important because now i'm going to go into my choice of the uh, of the consoles so as mentioned there's two versions of it one for capcom one for Taito. the color schemes match each one this console's half the ability to play evercade cartridges which is pretty amazing for the price point it was really what grabbed my attention because i was like okay this is cool you've got a smaller console i'm kind of done with all this big stuff i have the steam deck i have the rog ally i've got the uh, the switch uh, I actually have multiple versions of the Switch. And so I've been focusing more on smaller, pocketable consoles. But then, you know, most of the ones that I have are the Ambernick style uh, consoles. But I've been Evercade curious for some time. And I thought this would actually be a good entry point for me. So I decided to go for one or both. Well, what I did was I actually discovered that they had a limited edition bundle that comes with both of them, which is cool, right? I'm like, okay, awesome. That kind of makes it so that I don't have to decide between the two. Uh, but what's even cooler about it is that they're a special case color scheme uh, they're both clear uh, one of them the Capcom one is a, a clear blue and the Taito one is kind of a greenish uh, turquoise clear color and uh, I'm a sucker for this I'm not I keep saying I'm a sucker for this or that well I am that's how my money gets spent being a sucker but I am a complete sucker for clear plastics, electronics. I loved what Nintendo did with the Game Boy, with the Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, all of those. I always owned the clear plastic versions of them in whatever color scheme I preferred. Well, the same thing happened with this. I discovered this and I was like just obsessed with it. But because this was announced so long ago, the limited edition is supposed to be 2000 units. I was convinced these things were going to be sold out. Well, it turns out they weren't. So I ended up uh, placing a pre-order through funstock.co.uk for the bundle that comes with the clear see-through ones. And uh, what's actually even more amazing, uh, the price is actually a little higher than if you just went out and purchased two, like the two separate units. Um, they currently retail for $59.99 in the US. And if you buy both of them, then we're talking about just a tad under $120. The bundle unit that's only sold through funstock.co.uk, they actually retail for the equivalent of 146 US dollars. I paid no shipping and I was convinced they're gonna, they were probably gonna charge me like $30 for shipping because shipping costs from the UK are insane right now. There's a couple of items that I had pre-ordered through Kickstarters that basically the, the project owners had to like send out apology emails to people and give them the options to get refunds and stuff because the shipping charges were so high that they were, they were basically 50, 60, 70% of the value of the item that they were sending out. So um, I was convinced Funstock was going 
going to charge me shipping and they didn't and this is just amazing so to me it was a, a, a streak of luck uh, obviously if you haven't <laughs> figured out by now they had it available for pre-order and I'm hoping that's not just like some mistake on their website where they haven't uh, stopped the pre-orders for the for the limited and maybe I'll get some sort of email later on saying hey sorry but uh, we were actually sold out we just forgot to turn off the inventory uh, flag or whatever but if it does arrive which should be sometime in mid-November well a little bit after that because mine's being shipped from the UK then I'm gonna be ecstatic I actually absolutely love this idea for this product it is definitely for the likes of me I have a plethora of portable gaming consoles and and when it came to the Evercade ecosystem, I just wasn't really sold on the actual hardware platform yet. I thought that there was just something about it that was always slightly not calling my name. And when I saw these little guys, I basically fell in love. I was like, I love the idea of them being color coded to the to the theme. And uh, my theory is that Blazing Entertainment or Blaze Entertainment, if I said Blazing earlier, I apologize. I'm all over the place, but uh, Blaze Entertainment, they will continue to push the Hyper Megatech brand for these types of lower end consoles. They basically just remove some features like wireless access and Bluetooth and things like that. I've never used any of those features on any consoles that I've had that actually support them. Um, and I'm not saying that, that that's taken away from people that do use them. It's just that I would say the majority of people won't care for those uh, features. Wi-Fi, obviously for over the air software updates and stuff, I completely understand. Uh, Bluetooth to me is just kind of silly because usually when I play these things, I'm somewhere in the corner of the house or something like that. And I don't want to have like headphones on or something. If I do, I just plug an actual wired headphones and this actually has a headphone jack, which is pretty awesome. And I believe, although they haven't said anything in any of the documentation that I can find yet, you can suffer update them through the USB-C port that is also used for charging. So if that's the case, there shouldn't be any issues with it supporting future titles or, or cartridges being released by Blaze Entertainment for the Evercade. I know that their statements are pretty broad. They claim it works with every single one of the Evercade cartridges, which is something that I believe the original Evercade doesn't actually support because there are some Namco titles or cartridges that there was some, I don't know if it was licensing agreements or if it was an issue with like uh, the firmware update, but whatever the reasons were, they haven't said anything to that effect with the uh, Super Pocket product. And that leads me to believe that either the, the firmware on it is already able and capable of supporting all these, or they're going to be uh, releasing future firmware update. Well, that said, that was my ramblings. I just wanted to be one of the first to say, hey, this product is for me. I I'm not a hardcore, but I am an avid retro gaming collector. And to me, you know, I grew up with the Atari 2600, the NES, so on and so forth. To me, like all those games from, from that era, I replay them time and time again, but I'll be honest with you, I don't necessarily finish them time and time again. A lot of people, when they replay these games, they have to play them front to back. I pick it up and I just kind of get a little bit of that nostalgia fix and then I just move on to the next thing. ADHD will do that to you. The bottom line is this product appeases to somebody like me. I want something really small, portable, but still within the Evercade ecosystem. Anyhow, this uh, turned out to be a lot longer than I was expecting, so just wanted to give it a thumbs up from, at least from the perspective of an idea. I'm excited to receive my clear units, um, so I will probably uh, do a, a more lengthy review once I get them. If you've made it this far, thanks for listening.